Hello, Meredith Nicholson family. My name is Miss Robin and I am the school music teacher. Today I'm going to read chapter 11 of Fenway and Hattie. The bright morning sun is shining through the window. I go to nuzzle Hattie, but she's not there. And worse, this is not even her bed. Where am I? A quick glance around confirms the shocking reality. I'm in an empty room, trapped by the gate. Suddenly, I remember a horrifying dream. Hattie bossing me in here last night, brandishing the gate. Wait a minute, did that really happen? No, Hattie doesn't boss. Hattie doesn't brandish the gate. I begin tearing around the room. Pictures are flying into my head, images too awful to be true. Could I have actually spent the whole dark night alone in this strange room? Was I really curled up on this hard wooden floor instead of in Hattie's comfy bed that smells like mint and vanilla? With no Hattie brushing my fur and singing best buddies as I'm falling asleep, did I even sleep? I'm panting and shuddering. I can't stop racing in circles. It's worse than a nightmare. Finally, I get a hold of myself. There must be something I can do. I rush over to the gate. Hello, I bark. I'm in a boring place and I can't get out. I bark and bark, but nobody is coming. I pause and listen. Are those the sounds of my humans shuffling around downstairs? I must keep at it. I bark and bark some more. When I stop to listen again, my tail starts going nuts. Footsteps are coming up the stairs. I knew my plan would work. I leap up, trying to peer over the gate. Those footsteps are getting closer, and then Hattie appears. Hooray, hooray, I bark, offering my head for the rub. But where is it? I fall back down. Hattie has her arms folded, her face a terrible mixture of irritation and disappointment. Why is she glaring at me like that? She definitely could use her adorable dog's help to get rid of that frown. I jump and jump, trying desperately to lick her hand. I have a great idea, Hattie. I bark, cocking my head in that cute way she likes. Let's go to the dog park and have some fun. She leans away. Stop it, she says in a sharp voice. I collapse in a heap of confusion. What is happening to my Hattie? My heart's so heavy, I might sink right through the floor. Hattie talks in a serious and scolding voice. She does not sound anything like my Hattie. She sounds a little bit like Food Lady does when I climb on the couch. Hattie speaks and speaks, using lots of human words I don't know. They're pelting me like rocks. I can't even look at her. All I can do is cover my eyes and sulk. When Hattie leaves, I'm alone for a long, long time. But then there's good news. Hattie is back. She removes the gate and scoops me into her arms. Yippee! She's my Hattie again. I lick her chin and her neck and her ear. But my hopes quickly crash when we get outside. She sets me down and strides right over to that giant tree. She must be hibernating in the squirrel house because after I've sniffed every inch of the dog park and peed on every shrub, she's still up there. Eventually, there's nothing to do but sprawl out in the grass and listen to the fluty, chirpy birds and buzzing bees. And wait for Hattie. It's the loneliest dog park ever. I'm half snoozing when my ears perk in annoyance. Chipper chatter squawk, my fur prickles. It's one of those nasty squirrels. This one is even bigger than the two from last time. He's scampering across the tippy top of the fence along the far side of the dog park. Doesn't he realize there's a ferocious dog guarding the place? He's obviously not very smart because every time he reaches the end of the fence, he pivots and darts back the other way. But then again, who ever said squirrels were smart? As he scurries along, his hissing grates in my ears. His twitching is almost too revolting to watch, but I can't run away from my duty. 
I must defend my territory. I'm a professional. I spring up and trot closer, but not too close. Get out of here, you disgusting rodent, I bark. A dog park is no place for squirrels. He is not acting the least bit intimidated. He stops mid-scamper and bears his squirrelish fangs right at me. Chipper chatter squawk, he screeches. The sound is pure evil. I'm a few paces away, but still within striking distance. I said, go away, I bark, with more urgency this time. Chipper chatter squawk, he screeches again, as if he even has a chance against me. Digging his vicious claws into the top of the fence, he thrusts his hideous face in my direction. He's going to fling himself right at me. I back up a little, every hair on my neck trembling. You're not welcome here, you cowardly beast, I bark. Now beat it before I destroy you once and for all. But my serious threats do not drive him away. Next thing I know, that little monster flies off the fence right into the dog park. As soon as his feet hit the grass, he scampers toward the giant tree. Ha! If that's how he wants to play, he picked the wrong opponent. I've got you now, you nasty creature, I bark, taking off after him. His fat, fluffy tail swishes tauntingly as he runs. I can already taste that disgusting fur in my jaws. I'm about to snap when he flees up the tree in an ominous racket of clickety-clackety-clacks. Uh-oh, Hattie's up there. I paw the bark of the giant tree, snarling and growling furiously. Leave Hattie alone, you menace, I bark, or you'll have to answer to me. Fortunately, the rustling and swaying branches tell me he has enough sense to avoid the squirrel house. I drop down in the shade and curl up for a well-deserved rest. Then my ears detect familiar sounds through the fence, the jingling of dogs. If only I could get excited. Is that you, Fenway? Patch's lovely voice calls. I slump a bit lower. He looks like he's lost his best bone, I hear Goldie mutter. Poor guy, Patches says. It reminds me of the first time our sweet angel left the leashes on their hooks, forgetting all about them. You parked yourself at the door and sulked and stewed and didn't move, not even at supper time. Me, Goldie huffs. I believe you were the one who whimpered and carried on like a puppy when she went on without us that day. She practically shut the door on your nose like you weren't even there. Patches sniffs. She ran out without giving us so much as a pat. Well, a dog can't keep living in the past. Goldie says, what's done is done. Patches sighs. Still, I can't help but remember the good times. What's the point? Goldie says, then calls over to me. Hey, Fenway, do yourself a favor and move on without that short human. You're only making yourself miserable. Have a little sympathy, Patches says. Can't you see the pain he's in? It's all too much to bear. Leave me alone, I cry. See, Patches says. Hey, I'm only trying to help, Goldie says. Is it my fault if the little guy won't listen to my advice? There's advice, and then there's wise advice, Patches says. And I suppose yours is wise, Goldie grumbles. Fenway, Patches says kindly. We know from experience how hard it is to move on. But believe me, life without your short human isn't as bad as you think. That's your wise advice, Goldie says. Patches ignores her. Listen, Fenway, at first, we couldn't accept it. But as time got on, we got used to entertaining ourselves. That's right, Goldie says. Instead of swimming in the pond, we now lie in puddles. You mean we splash in the wading pool, Patches corrects. Speak for yourself, Goldie says with a growl. I lie in puddles. In any case, Patches goes on, we found ways to adjust, and you will too. I want to ignore them, but then a sense of fury rises up through my fur and consumes my entire body. In a flash, I'm charging over to the fence. Maybe that's working for you, I say. I could never live without my Hattie. I am going to get her back. Now, Fenway, I know you're determined, but, Patches says, her eyes sad and wincing, 
Have you actually thought about what a gargantuan task that would be? Hey, maybe he's some kind of super dog, Goldie says with a sneer. I know you both think I can't do it, I say, but I can. I will. Maybe I just need more time or better ideas or something, but I'll do it. Just you wait. Would you listen to him? Goldie murmurs. I jump up and scratch the fence. And who knows? I say, feeling a surge of power. When I get my Hattie back, maybe I'll get your angel back too. Patches gasps, but then her face falls. If only we could have our precious angel back, she says sadly. It's all I wish for. Too bad it's impossible, Goldie says, then looks away suddenly. Like she doesn't want us to see her drooping ears. I know I'll do it. I have to. All I need is a plan. Well, I hope everybody had fun listening to this chapter. Um, I had a great time reading it. Go, go, go first.